Welcome to Donne Talks, provided to you by Donne Women in Music. I am your host, Gabriella Di Laccio, and in every episode, I interview guests who are amplifying change. People who are using their voices and their positions to create bigger impact in our society. Today's guest is Vic Bain. Vic has worked in various sectors of music for 25 years. For six years, she was the CEO of the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers and Authors, now known as the Ivers Academy. And she's now a full-time campaigner for diversity and inclusion in the music industry. Everybody can do what I call supporting one female positive initiative per year. Every single individual or every single company, if we all did one thing, which could be booking, booking a woman, employing a woman, commissioning a woman, do you know, give, donating some, some, some money to a, to a fund that supports women in music. If every single person in the music industry did, did one, one thing towards gender equality, then we could be in a transformational place, I think, by, you know, very, very, very quickly. Vic is also the author of an influential report called Counting the Music Industry, shining a light on how few women are supported in professional music careers. She's also the curator of the F-List, a directory of female musicians, and a PhD researcher at Queen Mary University looking at women's careers in the music industry. Vic, thank you so much for being here with us today. I think it would be a great idea to start with you telling us more about the Counting the Music Industry report. Well, I think it, it's probably useful to know why why I did this gender audit any anyway. You, you know, I think um, you sort of describing your own um, personal ex personal experience of um, maybe performing in concerts and attending concerts and not really not really seeing what's what's missing, not really seeing what's there right in front of our eyes. And it took me a, a good while as, as well. I mean, I kind of knew it was, it was male, male, you know, the industry was male dominated, but every time I, I sort of in, inquired to that around, around me, people would deny that that was a, there was a problem. Um, uh, it really came to a head when, uh, when I became CEO of, of Basca and I was um, much more aware of who was winning British Composer Awards, which Basca uh, owned and ran, and who was who was winning Ivan Novello Awards, which Basca also owned owned and ran. And I did some um, analysis of 60, over 60 years worth of data of, of the Ivers because um, it had been going since 1955. And I, and I realized only 6% of the, of the awards given out to writers, only 6% of them were women in, six that, in over 60 years. So that had only gone up to 10% since 2010. So it's still, you know, I mean, it started off, um, in the 50s and 60s it was less than one percent so it has gone up but it's very it's it's very slow very slow movement and uh with the british composer awards there was um there was one year where there were there were no women winning any any of the awards and 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 uh, and very few had even been nominated so you know i really uh as a as as someone who cares very much about um about women in music i you know had lots of conversations about why why this was and i realized it was there was a pipeline for awards so this pipeline happens with the you know the the, the, the you know the gramophone awards with the with the brits with the uh with the with the ivers all of these music awards the pipeline is who was entered by the music publishing companies or the record labels. Of course. So you, you know you have to sort of be uh, in it in these awards to win, to win it. Yeah. So then I so then I thought, well, who who are they? Who are they entering? Who are the record labels and the publishing companies entering? And realised that the you know the statistics for for um, works being entered by women was very very low. So that made me think, well, who, who are who was on their rosters? Who were they signing? So I had started the audit while I was still at Basca, but it is a very time-consuming piece of work, and I didn't, I didn't get it, didn't get it done. So when I stepped down, 
about a year and a half ago, um, I thought, well, uh, I, you know, I've got some time on my hands and, uh, and I'm going to get this count done. So I looked at 30,000 profiles, <laughs> which wow. was a lot, of, a lot of counting. So I've, you know, got um, very, very meticulous records. Of, uh, it was over 300 labels and um, publishers I looked at. And, and, and extracted the information from, from all of their websites, all of the names yeah. of, their, of their artists, of their, of their writers and any bands as well. I had to sort of look at the, look at the breakdown of the, of the bands. And I don't think I was too surprised by the low, the low number of writers that I found because um, I, you know, I've worked with songwriters and composers for 15 years now. Um, you know, I was I was aware that it was very male dominated. So, forty sort of an average fourteen percent of of writers signed to those rosters. That sort of you know that sort of felt about about right. I mean, it's low and it's not great, but uh, it didn't surprise me. What did surprise me was the low numbers of musicians signed. You know, the performing musicians signed signed to the record labels. That um, that statistic and, really. Did. In your research, uh, it, it goes from pop to classical, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I looked at um, eight broad genres, and um, in, in in fact, you know, I mean, lots of lots of people have, uh, you know, get very get very obsessed by genres. Why haven't you got this genre and, and so on? But you know, I thought eight genres is enough to to sort of cover the yeah. you know the, the 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 full the full range. So I looked at classical, folk, pop, indie jazz, um, electronic, mm -hmm. heavy metal, and drum and bass and grime. Mm -hmm. um, and so the overall statistic is just under 20% w w women are signed to, signed to rosters. But um, you know, the best, the best um, genre to be a female musician in is classical, and that's just over 30% of the, of the act signed, signed to the labels. Now, this is I looked at groups up up until um, numbers of about twenty people. I didn't look at the big choirs or the you know the big orchestras because I thought that's another um, that's another research project to look at to look at those. So I wanted to you know put a cap on the um, on, so so it covers you know small um, uh, you know quartets and small and very small choirs and and so on. So yeah, just over thirty percent. It's the best, the best genre to be one. But still, thirty percent is not fifty percent. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about the unconscious bias we have because for me, this was a surprise when you said uh, that classical music is was is was the best in in the in the groups that you were uh, researching because I always thought, oh, of course, pop music, uh, the women are doing so great because we see a few of them doing great and in our you know we don't question we just think oh of course we see a few here a few there and then they're so great and they're so big and so talented i always thought they're fine Cla classical music is the problem as well because they're you know of course we know jazz is uh, uh, those are the the, the the genres i am more attached to like classical contemporary jazz uh, pop um, uh, but i always thought uh, no classical music is the, is the worst so uh, for me, that was a surprise. Uh, mm. I was I was surprised to see how 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 low that was. I mean, pop the pop music um, labels I looked at, there were seventy five of those, and eighteen percent of the artists signed to pop music labels are are, are female. Uh, and I think I think some of it is because um, it, it, women women are are, are very much um, sort of pushed pushed into or maybe encouraged to only be singers, or if they you know if they can play a musical instrument, they um, you know they're not necessarily being signed signed to, to, to labels, or they're not necessarily playing in um, in bands. Mm -hmm. So there's um, there's a sort of a disc discrepancy in the in in my actual report. I, um, I I sort of outline the difference between the solo artists and those who play in bands, and women are more likely to um, to be solo artists than they than they are to 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 play in bands, which are which are still very very male male dominated. Yeah, you need to go and uh, actually on your website. 
uh, and download the full report because it's, it's, it's extremely uh, revealing. And I think when I started the, the label Drama Musica and, and the project, when I realized exactly that, that, oh, CD awards and uh, people need to record first, right? You need to be a recording artist to be part of so many things. And it's the same with uh, work published. So I'll go, the, the, the publishing side, I don't know much about it. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, it's still, you know, it's still, I think, um, uh, you know, and, and, and in the report as well, I sort of talk about these, these, um, these 12 barriers, which um, doesn't mean to say that there aren't any more, any more barriers, but these were just um, uh, 12, 12 I, uh, I focused on. And there's still very much this, this stereotype of the, um, of the creative male genius, the male maestro. If you think of a composer, you think of somebody from, from you know maybe the, the 18th or 19th centuries who is who is a man, and in you know in fact we've got a we've got a thousand years of history where where women were not allowed to compose, yeah. they they just weren't they were forbidden, um, or or if they if they did and of course and you you and I know that hundreds and thousands of um, of women did compose, but they did secretly. They did. Yeah. They they were publishing uh, music under their husbands' names or their brothers' names. Uh, you know, they had to be protected by a male f family member. They were they were invariably w wealthy. Um, uh, you know, so women were encouraged to to play music in in what's called the private sphere of the of the of the home, but they were certainly not allowed to perform or create music outside of the home and we think we think we've moved on from that but we have you know we still have those uh, those stereotypes and attitudes i think deeply embedded in uh, in our society and in many countries around the world today we you know we have a situation where women are still not allowed to perform outside of the home so it's still you know they still have that that system that we had until until not very long ago as well so I think that's that's what we're we're dealing with, and um, also when I looked at educational data um, of of degree students who who was studying music and what numbers, what was the gender balance there? Uh, over overall, it's sort of a near it's it's about forty four percent female studying all all music subjects, but still in the technology based. Mm -hmm. um, degree programs you know, such as enge engineering and audio, audio production it, it is still very male dominated so there's a there's a problem there and those i i think those attitudes are still um uh, prevalent in in composing and songwriting as well so you know i know i know that there are um there are many more women out there who are composing that are yeah. being signed yeah. so there's I know yeah there's definitely there's definitely bar barriers i'm looking yes looking at the degree the degree students studying compositions about um uh, off the top of my head and i've got some all of the all of the figures in the report it's uh, at post grad level those studying composition a third of female a third of female so you know at, at that level you know that those composers are talented they're, they're, they're excellent, um, you know, they're obviously wanting to establish themselves as professional composers, but they are still not being signed to publishing companies and anywhere near the same levels of, uh, um, as men, uh, you know, and that is a real, a real problem because getting signed to a publishing company or a record label, um, it, it, you know, it does no matter what you think, what you think of them morally, it we, you know, it allows you, it gives you that financial investment to to further and develop your career. And women are not being given um, the same opportunities that that men are. What I'm been finding out is like you don't need a lot of prejudiced people, but you need only a few in certain positions to really stop things happening. Uh, in your opinion, what is the main reason? I know it's not one reason, but what is the main re thing we should fight right now? The main, what well, the main reason for women not being not being signed to to, to record labels? And well, I you know personally, yeah. I think it's because we recruit in our own image, uh, you know, and people and people don't realise that that's that that's what they 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 are doing. 
and uh, and people go for the the safe the safe option. So I think a lot of the um, the label the label owners and the um, creative talent scout, scouts out there, well, it's, it's a very male dominated sector, and so I you know I think that the they're much they're much more um, receptive to 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 music that is being created and performed by by men just because that's that's who who they are, so mm -hmm. they feel you know they feel that's familiar to them. So I think putting more women into the into those roles will 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 really start to enact changes. More you know more women running labels, more women in charge of um, A, A and R departments. Um, so I think you know we can sort of start start to make some changes there. But also, I don't think people realise the the statistics on their own rosters. Yeah. So you know, uh, it's something I hear a lot is well, um, uh, in response to in response to my research, well, I just don't recognise those those statistics, you know, because I'm I'm gender blind, I'm gender neutral, and it's all about talent. Um, until you know, until you point out that on their roster, it's you know, there's only 15 percent percent women, and uh, you know, maybe maybe they're not as gender gender blind or neutral as they um, as they as they perhaps think yeah. think they are. So yeah, so uh, you know, and um, you get to the oh, it's not about gender; it's about talent. That you go, mm, yeah, yeah. So I mean, looking, you know, looking at it was very important for me to look at the educational pipe, pipeline, um, and to and to see that over the past five, five years, well, in music performance degrees, it's 50-50, 50 percent female, 50 percent male, and um, y y and yet women, are, you know, are not able to to start their performance careers or sustain their performance careers in anywhere near the same the same numbers as as men. So you know, it's um, and so I don't I don't think it's about talent. Presumably, the women who are graduating from these degrees are every bit as talented as their male counterparts. If you if you if you if you look at my my figures. Um, the the worst, the most extreme example of this is in the jazz genre, where 25% of of the signed musicians are, are the solo artists are female, but it's something like only 7% of those in bands and jazz bands are are female. So there's a real, um, you know, very strong culture there of men only wanting to play with other with other men and not and not letting the women in at all. Which say so that's a you know that's an extreme example, but that's that's pretty that's pretty much mirrored um, in pop and and in classical as well. Yeah, it's it's almost unbelievable to think that. No, you you I, I as a singer, I think uh, we always uh, feel like things are more equal for us as a classical singer. I mean, I mean, uh, because if you are hired for an oratorio, you always have four four voices. In operas, you have female parts, male parts. So um, for me, it was. Um, when you start thinking of but i'm thinking more of classical music that's why your your comments are so shocking for me uh, even as performers because i know how much female uh, instrumentalists uh, suffer uh, the same thing uh, conductors they they are in the same uh, mm -hmm. have the same challenges and again we see a few up there but if you think of the um, amount of talent that is getting disencouraged i think on the yep. through, while they start, they might start and just feel like, no, uh, I'm not going to well, survive on this. A good, a good, a good fr fr friend of mine who's, a, well, she's a very um, well-regarded, powerful e executive in the in the music industry um, uh, from a classical music background. She she told me that when she was younger, she'd really wanted to be a conductor, and uh, I think she'd been on some sort of um, training training week. And she was the only woman, and the and the and the man who was um, training them had pointed out to her that physically she wasn't able to conduct because these would get in the way. What? So, so thus thus ended thus ended her conducting career. So I think um, 
you know, I mean, some of it's just pure, pure, pure sexism, isn't it? You know, um, yeah. there's a, there's, unfortunately, there's a, there's a lot of that about. I mean, when I when I was when I was sort of taking around the initial um, uh, results. First, you know, when I was doing when I was doing my research last year, and I looked I looked at the publishing companies and I looked at the labels first of all, and I was sort of having prelim preliminary meetings with various um, very high level, you know, CEO level, exe executives in the music industry at labels and publishing companies, and the feedback that came back to me was um, a mixture of well, men are better at music than women, and. <laughs> And there were more men studying music than 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 women, which is what set me off on looking and on, on looking at the educational um, pipeline data data as well. So you know, if those um, if those attitudes are, are reflective, and I suspect they are, of of CEOs and high level executives in the music industry, in publishing companies and labels, then. Um, you know, unf unfortunately, I think we've got, um, we've still got our work cut out. If you are enjoying this podcast, there are three simple things you can do to support our work. First, subscribe. This way you will never miss an episode. Second, tell about us to a friend or family member. You will always have someone to share the stories of this interview. And this way we can raise awareness and inspire more people in our way. Third, give us a review on iTunes or whatever other channel you subscribe. This way you will be helping others to find our podcast. Now, let's get back to my conversation with Vic Bain. So uh, tell us about uh, the athlete then, because I think the athlete yeah. is your way of contributing. Doing something. Yeah. <laughs> doing, doing something. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, I've, I've sort of been I've been taking um, my counting the music industry research um, around to various universities and um, and charities and things and things like that. But uh, you know, it's pretty. Um, it can be very sobering, if not depressing, um, uh, reading. So you know, I always I always try to 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 end my presentations with well, what can we what can we be doing about this? So yes, the F list is is. Is um, is something that I hope w which will help, um, because of all of all of the the data gathering I did last year. I have, as I said, you know, I've got a, a record of the profiles of thirty thousand mus musicians, thousands of whom are, are women. And in January this this year, I saw on Twitter again going around on social media. All of the, um, the the sort of you know the the previews of the lineups for the music festivals that had been booked for the for, for the summer. I mean, goodness, how things how things have changed. But um, there were very you know there were very various festival lineups which were being announced, and um, invariably it was the um, it was the same um, it was the it was the same thing. You know. Some of the some of those the bigger ones the festivals especially the you know the heavier more rock rock music based I looked at the lineup of Leeds and Reading and it was only thirteen percent of the musicians on stage were women thirteen percent in 2020 you know my goodness and yet when you when you read the um, the responses from a lot of the festival promoters they say well. Um, there just aren't enough women uh, musicians to contact. We've asked them all, you know. They, <laughs> this, you know, where, where are they? <laughs> and you know, and then and lots of people very helpful on Twitter go, well, I know a woman, you know, and they and then they a woman, um, uh, you know, or, or or whatever, you know, just very just very small numbers. And I just thought, well, I've got I've got thousands listed in my research. What if I extracted all of the women, and um, and just put that up as a as a as a big list? So it took it took me a couple of weeks, um, you know, to get to get all of the all of the women, or the bands which had women in them, yeah. in, different, in different genres. And so halfway through February, I I, I made that live onto a um, a Google a Google spreadsheet. The sun's come out <laughs> onto, a, onto a big Google Google spreadsheet, 
and um, yeah, it went it went viral. So there's three and a half thousand individual musicians and um, uh, nearly two and a half thousand bands or groups with women in them. And you can search by genre. Um, there's I, I've sort of mainly most of most of those women are are listed under their record labels, but there's about five hundred self-releasing uh, musicians as well. So yeah, it's publish, publishers and writers, record labels and that artists. So any anyone who's organising an event, no matter what genre, they can they can go onto this list and maybe you know discover artists they've never heard of. Um, you know, these are, most of them are signed, so there's that sort of a quality marker there, and um, yeah, we just it just went crazy. I mean, I did have um, there was a BBC news story went went out about it at the start of March, and in one week I had four festivals contact me wanting wanting me to give them help and advice on booking booking more women on their festival stages. Oh, so. Yeah, I was, really, I was like, yes, and, you know, that's, you know, for, for me, I just thought if, you know, if one woman gets booked out of this I I initiative, yeah. who, gets, who gets work. Um, so I'm really, ex I'm really excited about, about that. And I know it's, you know, it's such a horrific situation this summer that we're not going to have any, any festivals, but let's just pray for next, for next summer and pray also that um the gender balance on these festival stages is going is going to be better than 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 it has been up to this point so that's my that's my mission with the, with the f list yeah but um as you were telling us you are republishing it a, a bigger version now yeah i'm well i'm rebuilding it in 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 wordpress so it's going to be in a in a, in a beautiful looking um uh, website because at the minute it's just on a google sheet you know yeah. which is very um, I've, been, I've been there. I checked. Yeah, you know, it's very, it's very, um, you know, it's functional. I mean, you can find, you can find everyone. Um, you can do, as I say, you can do searches by genre and, uh, and so on. But it's still, it's quite limited. So, at the uh, at the minute, I'm, um, yeah, I'm at the start of a of a, a, a WordPress rebuild, but which hopefully, hopefully will be ready in July. Do you find that because I find this with uh, at the at the website Donne we have the big list I call it the big list because for me when I started typing them there it was so big and was like thousands of women you know kind yeah. of and I really wanted to make a point of typing myself so I would get to find out a bit more about all of them and yeah. now we have a, a daily blog since last January and every day of the year there are two new composers right yeah. that, um, we are featuring there we continue to do interviews um, I will give all the details at the end for people to whoever is not in contact uh, with with us yet to submit their their details as composers living composers do you find and, and I, I I got the same thing when I published the the researches on the orchestra programming uh, two years ago, which was all over the place, The Guardian, and then you go BBC interview, la 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 la, and then that was it. Then and then six months pass passes, and I I, I meet again and somebody who will say to me, Ah oh, no, but women composers they only wrote choir music, right? Only religious stuff, no. And you feel like, what's going on? I mean, and then you give a people like, and there are other projects. There are so many projects uh, promoting women in music, not only women, but, you know, diversity uh, in all, and all. And you find databases. And then people ask me, oh, no, but the music is very hard to get. No. Oh, no, but the, you, you don't find music. No, yes. So yeah. how do we manage to cross that barrier? Because you're going to publish this, amazing republish and the big list is there all these other projects are there people don't really have excuses and things are so slow i know there is progress i really don't want to be negative i know there uh, there is some progress uh but i do find it so slow i think, uh, I think it's yeah it's so important to keep looking at the statistics you know because people you know people have a tendency to to say oh well everything's fixed now yeah, we've got we've got women in music. We've do, we've done that. Um, again, that was another response that came back to me when I was showing my preliminary uh, research results, and um, and and a CEO said said to me, "But my my board thought we you know we did diversity last year, 
so you know so that's that tick tick box done and so i think uh you know it was very it made for very uncomfortable reading for for a lot of people when i published my my research to show that no we are a very very long way away from from uh, equality and so you know we better we better keep keep on at this so i you know i was i i was removed from a lot of christmas card lists i <laughs> think you know i i I'm, i really i really made myself quite unpopular because people don't you know don't like so I just think it's so important uh, to keep looking at at the statistics and all of the, all of these labels and publishing companies need to need to be looking at this not just their staff rosters which is which are slightly better but their but their creative rosters and then you know and be open and transparent about that and 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 want to take some positive actions about that and it's not you know I mean you you know it's not just it's not just last year's pro project it's this year's as well and it's next year's too. Yeah. Uh, there is one question I'm going to ask you. Some women, uh, more specifically composers, don't really like the idea of being boxed in these female composers or be part of something because it feels like they are not equal to the others. And I find very, I really respect, but I, I'm quite um, a defender of the we need to promote this because yeah. if there was equality, uh, then there wouldn't be a reason for these projects to exist, right? So if everything was fair, yeah. uh, so uh, for for those who don't think the, or think, oh, no, I don't want to be seen as a quota, I really hope people can overcome that because it's not a quota. It's a, it's, we need to give like promotion to more talent so they can get the visibility they deserve. That's how I how I feel. But do you find uh, some women that come to you and will come and think something like that? Yes, uh, all the time. I mean, if you if you're a composer or a, or a you know, or a musician, um, you don't want to be representative of your of your sex. You don't. You want to be you want to be valued for your for your talent and your creativity. I totally get that. But there's something called um, tokenism, which has been which has been studied um, in in organisations for for a long for a long time. If if you are less than fifteen percent of a group, you you are the minority. In the reckon, fifteen fifteen percent is 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 about the level. You are a minority, and you become a token. So whether you like it or not. You will become representative of that, you know, of that minority group, whether that is a disability, or it's your, it's your race, or it's it's your it's your sex. So, you know, I'm I I, I do feel I understand women's frustration at, at being labelled the fe the female composer, um, but um, it's you know it's yes it's just it's one of it's one of those things that happens if you're if you're in, in in a minority so whether you like it or not i'm afraid it's you know that's that's just the way it's going to be until until things are things are more equal uh but i will finish with this question uh which is for me it's for you uh which is really much more like a reflection of what else can we do as artists as uh, administrators of a small group and I think many people feel like um, oh I'm so small my group is so small nobody's watching us uh, we can't really change anything and uh, I can say this from my own experience that even adding one piece in one concert it really uh, you, you make one person curious is so amazing to see and uh, you know people are just audiences i really find this i don't know why big orchestras or radio stations don't believe in that or uh, audiences are more open than you think to new things if if the music is presented with passion and 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 with belief behind it and it you know we can educate an audience a little bit before or it's amazing how open audiences are the public really uh, we're not we didn't we didn't reach a memory full type of talent in music that we can't learn new stuff as mm. audiences as a public so i really uh, think as artists if you are an artist really uh, visit vic's list my list the big list because it's a world of repertoire to be mm. um, explored 
And this is uh, what I think as an artist, but what else can we do, Vic, as women and people anyway? I think, um, well, there's so much that can be done, um, you, you know, right from a sort of a governmental policy, policy level, down to any any of us who own and run <laughs> I mark, <laughs> any of us who own and run companies in the in the music industry, uh, uh, as I say, you know, every every music company needs needs to do an audit and then look at how they can positively improve their their statistics. Um, everybody everybody can 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 um, do what I call um, supporting one female positive initiative per year. Every single individual or every single company, if we all did one thing, which could be booking, booking a woman, em, employing a woman, commissioning a woman, do you know, give, donating some 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 money to a to a fund that supports women in music. If every single person in the music industry did did one one thing towards towards gender equality, then we could be in a transformational place. I think by you know very 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 quickly. And what you know what can we do do ourselves? Well, we can we can keep informing ourselves. We can we can network and support each other as as well, and uh, and most importantly, I think we've got to be helping the next the next generation, the 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 young women who are just coming out of university right right now. You know, we really need to be keeping a very close eye on them so that we don't watch them dis disappear at the same the same yeah. level that has been over the past few years. Yeah. My ma my main recommendation for for education and for those for those who are um, teach teaching music and especially young women, a real a real barrier is um, uh, is 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 women studying music. It doesn't matter what genre, but being have having something which I call technophobia. Mm. So you know, I mean, this is this is very complex. It's all part of our socialization, you know, in our society from a from a very young age. You know, girls are pushed pushed towards uh, pink glitter and unicorns. Uh, you know, which I love, by the way, but it shouldn't just be everything. And boys are pushed into, um, uh, you know, what I call technology competence. Now, I trained as a singer 30, 30, 30 years ago, and um, I didn't, you know, I didn't do a single um, uh, technology uh, lesson the whole time I was studying music. So, you know, when you go out into the real world and you're using recording studios, uh, or, or even if it's a live live stage setup, you are then putting your career and your and your art, your artistic credentials in the hands of teams of men who who are who are working around you, and uh, and I think that's very disempowering as well. So I really yeah my biggest my biggest um, um, contention at the moment is that even if you are training to be an opera singer. Um, it doesn't matter what genre of, of music and, and performance, uh, I would encourage all girls and women who are studying music to get a grasp of te technology, you know, and whether, whether that's, uh, you know, being, being able to um, compose their own pieces and put it onto Sibelius or, or, or however that man manifests, just to be more, more confident because then they'll be able to have more control over, over their creative careers. Vic, thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, for mm -hmm. you, taking the time, first of all, to do all you do, what, that you do to support women in music. And I think what you're doing is really amazing and uh, it's kind of changing the scenery. Thank you. Well, thank you very much as as well. It's uh, you know it's been it's been great to 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 speak to another another um, a very passionate ca campaigner. Um, yes, a woman a woman after my own heart. <laughs> so, for listeners wanting to know more about Donne and everything we do, please check our website on www.donne.uk.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes to subscribe. And while you're there, it would be great if you could rate and review the show and spread the word on social media. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to be with you in our next interview.